Hello, welcome. I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer. Today I have another foil video for you. And I know I've done a few of these lately. I promise they won't take over my channel. I'm just really excited about the many new products coming out for foiling, but I will take a break from it. Now today we're stepping up the foiling game, taking our products and using them creatively so we can get more from them. This involves doing reverse foiling, overlap foiling, and much more. So I have lots of techniques for you and you'd be surprised how simple they are and how quickly you can create a really fun card. I'll start out by demonstrating some techniques and then we'll make a bunch of cards. And at the end, I'll even throw in some stitching examples along with the foil. Let's get started with reverse foiling, which is really a great way to get more out of the foiling process. I'll be using these solid hot foil plates from Spellbinders. There are four new ones. There's a smaller rectangle, an oval, a circle, and a square. These are great for creating a focal point with reverse foiling, for overlap foiling and more, and I'll show you that today. I'll also be using the large Pink Fresh Studio solid hot foil plate later on. All right, now let's go ahead and do just quick foiling with the circle, just to show you how to use this and how cool it works. So I'm putting this in the center of a piece of white cardstock. I'm using Hammer Mill white cardstock. I'll link to that below. It's super smooth and great for foiling, but you can use whatever you have. I like to create a hinge with some tape on one side of the, of the hot foil plate. Then I take my glimmer hot foil and place it between the paper and the hot foil plate, making sure the pretty side of the foil touches the plate. I then flip that over and lay it hot foil plate down onto the warm surface of my glimmer machine. This is a Spellbinders glimmer machine that is used for hot foiling. There are different foil machines depending on what die cut machine you have, so you need to check with the manufacturer. I put the plates on top that come with the machine and I press the timer. When the timer is done, which takes about a minute, you take all of those plates out and run it through your die cut machine to apply the pressure. The glimmer machine provides the heat, the die cut machine provides the pressure, and look at this beautiful solid circle of foil that you get. So I'm going to be demonstrating this many times throughout this video, but kind of changing it up each time. Now let's use one of those solid hot foil plates to do reverse foiling, and this actually ends up with three card panels you can use. Here I have the older Spellbinders flower pattern hot foil plate, it's a favorite of mine, and I will put a piece of glimmer hot foil onto it with the pretty side facing down. You always have the pretty side of the foil kissing the hot foil plate. On top of that, I'll put a piece of pool colored cardstock, decided not to use white this time. Then I put the two plates that come with the glimmer machine and press that timer button. When it stops flashing, we can take out all of those plates by the handle that you see on the bottom and run it through our platinum die cut machine. If you have a different die cut machine than this, you'll want to check to see which hot foil machine is compatible with the die cut machine you have. There are different machines out there. They all work well. This one is the, the glimmer machine is the one that works well with the Spellbinders Platinum and the Big Shot. All right, so I ran that through my die cut machine to apply pressure and look at this beautiful foil image on that light blue cardstock. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's card panel number one. And here is another one where I just did white cardstock with gold foil. It shows up a little bit, bit better, so I wanted to show that example. So we can remove that plate and now we'll take one of the solid hot foil plates. I'm choosing the oval this time. This is great because you can create foil only in that oval shape on the front of your card. So I'm taking the leftover negative space. This is the leftover foil from the last panel and I'm using it with this one. I put it pretty side down onto the oval, then a piece of white cardstock on top. Then I put my two plates on top of that. I'll push the timer button. Once that's done, I'll take out all the plates, run it through my die cut machine. I like to go back and forth. Some people like to go slow with these solid plates. But then when you take it out, check this out, you get only that leftover foil pattern in the oval shape. And this is a great focal point on a card. Here's another example I did using some leftover gold foil, just so you can see how you can get different colors of foil and get really great results. Now for the third panel. This time I have the Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate, which is a full card panel size and I'm laying that leftover foil on top of it, then a piece of white cardstock. So I've used this foil piece three times and I'll get three beautiful panels. 
This time I let the timer go a little bit longer since it's such a large hot foil plate. And then I ran that back and forth through my machine and check it out, we have a third panel now. So from one hot foil piece, we were able to create three card patterns and they all turned out beautifully. That's the advantage of these solid hot foil plates. If you have a large hot foil plate, you can sometimes use the back to get that solid area, but I do find that the solid hot foil plates that you purchase work much better. Okay, now I have the Spellbinders Fluted Classic Rectangle Die Set, and I'll be using these dies to cut the panels here. You could use a trimmer to cut them out, but sometimes I think it's easier just to use a rectangle die. And that fluted one gives those little details which allow you to create a simple card, but have those fun details that step it up a bit. So I'm gonna use that fluted die on this simple panel. So here we have our three panels all created with that one piece of foil. We have the first one with the blue, the second one where we use the oval solid hot foil plate, and then the one on the right where we use the solid hot foil plate, the large one from Pink Fresh. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn these into cards, then we'll move on to some more card examples. First, I'm starting with the first panel we made where we did the simple background foil on the pool colored cardstock. I thought it'd be fun to add this layered butterfly. This is the new Spellbinders May 2022 Glimmer of the Month Club. So Spellbinders has these kits of the month where you can either get like a large die set, a small die set, a stamp set. There's lots of different options and you subscribe and the price is very low and I always like what they have to offer. You've seen me use their clubs and videos in the past that you do have the option to cancel at any time. It's really a very easy subscription and I like that you're getting a tool. So like for one, for a low price, you get like a die set like this, not all the other pieces that you may not use. So this particular one has a lot in it. It has dies and glimmer hot foil plates. You don't need to have a foil machine to use this set. You could just use the dies. And you can also make an impression on your cardstock with a foil plate if you don't have a foil machine. There are also some sentiments in here, but you can see there are lots of dies to add fun details to these butterflies. I'm only going to do the large butterfly and a few of the details on it. I did want to demonstrate how you can foil with these if you prefer to. These are little hot foil plates included in that set, and these will go on the wings of the butterfly. I like to put a tape, as I mentioned, to create a little hinge. I find that so much easier in making sure everything stays put as you do the foiling process. So I just flip those plates up and then slide in a piece of hot foil. Always make sure the pretty side kisses your hot foil plates. Then flip that over so the hot foil plates will touch that warm gray surface. I should say hot because it's really hot. Then if you need to, you can put tape to hold it in place, but I usually don't feel a need to. I put the plates on top, press the timer. When the timer's done, run it back and forth through my die cut machine and look at that beautiful glimmer detail. And by the way, if you're interested in knowing how to use hot foil plates without a foil machine to make an inked impression, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. Definitely worth checking out. All right, now I'm using the dies in that set, which actually pierce little holes that follow that foiled pattern. And so you could stitch this if you want to. That's what's cool about this set. You can stitch, you can foil, you can leave it as is. I decided to skip the stitching on this and keep it pretty simple. But thanks to how these dies cut, they have a lot of detail in it right away after cutting it. So I needed a sentiment and I thought I'd use a foiled sentiment. I have the Spellbinders More Sentiments Glimmer Plates. There are so many different sentiment sets like this that Spellbinders has to offer. I encourage you to look through them and find which occasions you might use the most. I'm taking out some that I think I would use on the cards that I'm making today or in the future. And I'm putting a little temporary tape on the back of it. And then I just glue them onto a piece of printer paper, something thin. I just find this is helpful when doing foil of these small hot foil plates because it keeps them in position and they don't go flying everywhere. Like I, I would lose them so quickly. So this just kind of keeps them in place. So I lay that onto my hot foil machine, then the foil, then a piece of smooth white cardstock, and then my two plates, press the timer button, same thing every time, then run that through my die cut machine. Now I have a bunch of foil sentiments that I can use on this card and future cards. 
And we can use that leftover foil to create some reverse sentiments. So there'll be foiled reverse sentiments. I'm using the large Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate for this. I usually reach for that when I just want to do basic reverse foiling using the leftover foil. I use the Spellbinder shaped hot foil plates like the circle, oval, and so on when I want to create a reverse foiling focal point on my card, which you'll see me do many times throughout this video. But you could use any of them for this technique. All right, so I trimmed down one of the sentiments that I wanted for this card, and I also die cut a bunch of flowers. Now for the flowers, I'm using the Spellbinders Mini Blooms and Sprigs die set, which is a favorite of mine and I've used so many times that I actually bought a second set so that I could cut more flowers at once. That's how much I use it and like it. So I cut some soft colored flowers and leaves to add to the center of our butterfly on today's card. So there you can see my little cluster of flowers. I like to do a little triangle of three and then have some little leaves sticking out. And I added some yellow pearls. Then on top of that, we have our foiled Hello Sunshine sentiment. Now I glued that butterfly on to that foil background that we created earlier. I just foiled the background hot foil plate onto a pool piece of cardstock. And then I added that onto a white note card. But after looking this, at this, I decided it was a little too busy with the detail of the butterfly and the foil in the background. So I duck, die cut a white rectangle and then matted that with a pool colored rectangle and glued that behind the butterfly. And I felt that allowed the butterfly to stand out more and the foil to be more around it instead of behind it. So don't be afraid to change your mind. I do it all the time. I think it's an important part of your creativity. And in this case, I think it really helped to make the card a little more clear. Okay, let's now use the card panel where we have the foiling and the oval at the center of the panel. And for this one, I wanted to keep it very simple and add a monochromatic little butterfly. This is the Spellbinders Delicate Butterfly Die Set. I've used this in a video before. I will link to it up here on the top right. And I just cut the different layering pieces from different shades of pool colored cardstock and glued them together. I added our foiled card panel to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card, added the butterfly towards the top center, and then added a foiled sentiment from the more sentiment glimmer plates that I showed you earlier. I also added some white pearls into the background foil pattern. I really like how the foil picks up the colors around it. All right, now we have our third panel. This is the one that has the white solid oval in the center and the foiling around it. I decided to add some stitching to this. Stitching is one of my favorite things to do on cards along with foiling, so I thought I'd combine the two. But keep in mind, you could use these dies without stitching. It would just have the whole details. So this is the Spellbinders May 2022 Large Die of the Month Club. Look at all of these dies included in the set. You have those stitching U letters, then a solid die that cuts the shadow for the word U. Then you have all of these letters and shadow dies for the words thank, to, me, uh, from, happy, hello, and birthday. So you can make lots of sentiments out of this. So you have the shadow dies and then the individual letters. And this is a really neat look because the font is slanted or italic, which is very different than other dies that I have. So I'm excited to have something with a different look. I didn't use these dies today, just the word for the stitched you. Now I'm not going to show the stitching because I wanted to focus on the foiling techniques today, but if you want to know how to do the stitching that I did here, I will link to a how-to video up here on the top right where you can learn how to do it very easy and a fun way to bring in another hobby into card making. So I added those stitched die cuts towards the center of the oval panel. I also added some little flowers using the mini blooms and sprigs die set that I showed earlier. The From Me Too is from the Spellbinders More Sentiments Glimmer Plates, and I foiled that in blue and added on to the card. So lots of foil in the background. The light really catches this a lot in my craft room because I have lots of lights. It is a little more subtle in person, but a great way to make your card extra special. 
Now, before we move on to making some other cards, I wanted to share with you a tip. I didn't turn these into cards, but I wanted to show this to you. If you have trouble positioning your hot foil plates on your card panels, one really helpful thing is to cut a piece of scrap cardstock to have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch hole at the center. And that's what you see here. And I'm just taping it onto the hot portion of my glimmer machine. That kind of gives me a target area to place my pieces and make sure they're kind of centered or positioned where I want on an A2 card panel, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So here I have a hot foil plate border. I'm laying some foil down onto it, and then I'm putting my white cardstock, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, right into that opening. I can see the opening around it on that navy cut piece that we did. So I can make sure that it's getting positioned onto that white cardstock where I want it. Then I tape that in place and do the foiling process. You can also just tape your hot foil plate onto your card panel, but sometimes the creating the hinge with the tape doesn't really work. So I wanted to show you this option to help you get things positioned where you want it. So here's a good example. I was having trouble taping this oval at the center and adding the foil. So instead I'm laying the oval hot foil plate right in the center of that rectangle opening. So it's centered there. Then I'm laying my foil on top of it. This is my leftover foil. And I'm putting it at an angle. I thought that would be kind of fun. And trimming off some of the extra foil. So I'm using that rectangle opening on that navy cardstock kind of as a guide to get that oval centered. And then I can bring my white cardstock piece, which is cut to that same size, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I lay it over the opening. I can see the opening and that I've got it positioned just right. If you want to, you can tape this in place. I tend to do so just so I don't have to worry about anything shifting. I don't really have a steady hand when I'm doing this. So this makes sure it stays put. Then you do the plates, the timer button, take that all out after the timer's done and run it through your die cut machine. Now, if you're finding your solid plates aren't transferring the foil completely, you can put a cardstock shim between your two plates and that'll give more pressure. It just depends on your particular die cut machine. I found I didn't need it in most cases, but it's always there if you wanna try that. So there we have our oval centered there because of the trick of using that rectangle. So that's something that may be helpful for you and I keep that rectangle piece and use it over and over again. All right, so here are the two pieces I got with this, with this example. I didn't turn them into cards today, but I'm definitely saving them for the future. All right, let's move on to another technique and then we'll combine them all. This is layered foiling. This works really well with the shaped solid hot foil plates and it's fast to do. So I have the circle solid hot foil plate and I have some matte silver foil. I think this is beautiful foil. Putting that pretty side down onto the foil plate, put white cardstock on top and then our plates, press the timer button, run it through our die cut machine and there we have this beautiful backdrop of matte silver foil. I love that. Now you could use this for any of your card making, but I thought it'd be fun to foil it on top of it using the peony hot foil plate. So I trimmed that background down and now I'm positioning my peony where I want it to foil and creating a little hinge on the side. Then under this I'm sliding some blue foil. I tend to use the holographic and matte foils the most. I don't know why, uh, but you could use the regular foils if you want to. This is the blue holographic. I just love that color, that aqua color. I'm trimming off the excess. I saved those trimmed pieces for future use and I'll show you what I do with them later in this video. Okay, so once this is trimmed, I will lay it down onto the hot foil machine, making sure that the foil plate touches that hot gray area. Put the plates on top, timer button, run it through the machine, and then check this out. You have beautiful layered foil. This would be great for a one layered card. You could just take a sentiment hot foil plate and layer that foil sentiment on top of all this foiling you've already done. That is a great option. I like to have a little dimension. So I used one of my reversed foiled sentiments and I glued that right along the bottom along with some little silver pearls. The background is trimmed to be a bit and added to a pool colored note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So there's lots of foil on here, so I kept the card design very simple. And this is a great way to make a bunch of clean and simple cards pretty quickly. 
However, if you want to go bold, you can do so too with the foils. Here I used some bright colored foils and I covered the entire card panel with layered foiling. So let's do this one quickly. I used bright pink foil for this one, put that onto our circle solid hot foil plate and foiled that onto white cardstock. Once I completed that, I thought I'd add some rose gold foil on top. So I trimmed down my card panel and I chose that floral border die that I used on my example earlier and I'm taping it to the side kind of to create a hinge. I usually like to do a hinge with my foiling if possible. If not, I do that rectangle window technique that I showed you a few moments ago. Now I'm sliding some rose gold foil underneath it. Notice I'm using a bigger piece than I need. That's because I plan to foil the other side too. All right, so I put that down into my glimmer machine. I wanna make sure this doesn't shift when I do the foiling. So I use tiny little pieces of tape. Now you could use any type of tape for this, but I do find that the Spellbinders uh, yellow tape really works well with the foiling. All right, so run that through our die cut machine when the timer's done. And here we have layered foil. Now let's repeat the same process on the other side. So I'll take that border foil plate, create a little hinge on the side, slide the rest of that foil underneath it. And I almost did it upside down here. I do this a lot. Always think you want your pretty side of your foil to kiss the hot foil plate. All right, so I'll close that up. Put it onto our foil machine, tape it in place if you want it to be secure, run it through, and now we have foiling over the entire front of the card and it's overlapping with that pink foil in the center. This is one of those kind of cards where I say go bold or go home because it's so bold and so shiny. So I kept the rest of it very simple. A lot of times when I have a bold card, I like to keep my sentiments and my card base black or white. So here I did a black foiled sentiment for thanks and from me to you. And I placed my background onto a black note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did put a white cardstock insert on the inside so I have a place to write my personal message. So that is another example of creating a layered foil background. All right, now this next card is my favorite. And in this one, I combined our first two techniques, the reverse foiling and the layered foiling. And this one I think would be great for a one layer card also, although I did do some layering. This time I'm using the method of having a die cut panel on my foil machine to use as a guide. So that rectangle opening is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have a glimmer hex floral hot foil plate towards the top corner of that opening and I'm laying some blue foil on it. My blue is much bigger than I need it to be, but that's okay. It's gonna work well for the technique we're doing. So I lined up my white cardstock with that opening, taping it in place and doing the foiling process. And by the way, you may notice that I have three different manicures and about 14 different outfits in this video. That's because it took me a few weeks to make this. I tend to overthink my videos and spend a lot of time on them. So you may notice that sometimes. All right, so here we have our first foil impression. Now let's take the rectangle hot foil plate, put that in the center of that opening and lay the leftover piece of foil on top. So it's kind of in the top corner again of that hot foil plate. Taping my white cardstock on top of it, putting the plates on top of that, and then we run it through our die cut machine when the timer is done. So in all of these cases, the hot foil machine applies the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure, which gives the perfect foiled image. All right, so we'll peel this off, and there we have this beautiful reverse image at the center of our card panel. This would be great to add layering to right here. You'll notice I had a little uh, mess up there in the foil. That's because there was a little piece of paper that I forgot or I didn't notice, and I didn't wipe it off the foil. So my foil is a little messed up there, but we're going to cover it up. No worries. So I'm taking the same hot foil plate and I'm creating tiny little hinges with some tape here. I'll flip that over and I'll slide a piece of dark blue foil underneath. So here we're doing the layering of the foil. So the first step was the reverse foiling. Now we're doing some foil layering. So this is a really fun way to kind of step up this background. After doing the foiling process, we have this beautiful one layer foiled background where that rectangle foils right in the center thanks to that shaped uh, solid hot foil plate. You could add a sentiment to this, put it on a card panel and be good to go. I decided I wanted to die cut an oval from the center of it. 
Now, you could do this any way you want, but for some reason, I was thinking an oval would look nice with that floral pattern we created. And look at that beautiful shine. For a background, I added the detail with a dotted tile debossing cover die from Altenew. And I did that on the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch light blue note card. For sentiment, I used the Spellbinders Hello Dear Friend foil plate. I foiled that with black foil and I die cut it with the coordinating die that comes with it. And I'm gluing that onto the center of our card. Notice I did mat our foiled oval with a white oval also, just to give it a finished look. The only other thing I added were some blue pearls that are iridescent, which picks up that iridescent foil in the background. So this is actually a pretty quick card to pull together for me, but the foil really makes it special, especially because we did that reverse and layering technique together. I think this would be really fun to recreate in lots of different colors of foil. All right, now the rest of my cards here are actually stitched cards, but I did combine in foiling, and I have another foiling trick for you using solid hot foil plates. Now, I really enjoy stitching on cards. Spellbinders has some great stitching dies. When I travel or go to baseball games, I'm always stitching. So I have these pieces from some travel I did recently. Now, if you want to learn how to stitch on paper, I will link to a video up here on the top right. I'm not gonna stitch in today's video to save some time. Be sure to check out that video if you're interested. It's pretty simple to do, and I find it very therapeutic. However, today we're going to create foiled die cut letters to add to these stitch panels. This is a great way to use up your leftover foil pieces. Because it's the biggest, I used the Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate so I could foil as much as possible at once. However, you could use the shaped hot foil plates from Spellbinders if you prefer. So I'm laying pieces of foil face down onto the solid hot foil plate and then putting my cardstock on top of that, putting the plates on top of that and doing the hot foil process. I will say again, when I use a solid hot foil plate, I always give a little extra time past what the timer does just to give it some extra heat. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but I feel like I get the best foil that way. Now look at all of this foil here I have. I can die cut letters from these leftover foil pieces. So don't ever throw even the smallest pieces of foil away. You can use them for techniques like this. Now this is the Spellbinders May 2022 Die of the Month Club. I'm crazy about this. Now the letters for hello actually make impressions too with those little lines. So you could cut these from plain cardstock if you want to, but I'm gonna do foil letters today. These hello letters can also be used without that stitched background die if you want to use them on a card separately. So off screen, I did a bunch of die cutting, stitching, and I even die cut the letters for hello from that leftover foil paper that we just created. Another thing you could do is die cut the letters first and then do the foiling on them, but I like it when I die cut after I do the foiling. I find I get a better result. So the, I feel like the foil really makes these cards stand out even more. So on the first one, I used a gold iridescent foil. Here I used a silver iridescent foil. And I used the silver iridescent also on my pink stitch card. You may notice I use a lot of the gold and the silver iridescent foil. There are two reasons. One, I really like the results. But two, I bought a bunch of it when I first liked it. And I didn't realize how much is on a roll. <laughs> one roll goes a long way. So I have a lot of it on hand. I'm really liking this silver matte foil also. Look at that beautiful detail that you get from those dies, those little lines and the letters, and that silver matte looks really nice. So a lot of today's techniques are about using the leftover foil, so really making the most of your foiling, and die cutting your foiled paper is a great way to stretch those supplies. Okay, I have a bonus card for you. This is nothing to do with foiling. It does have a foil sentiment, but other than that, I just wanted to share it with you. I thought this stitching die was super fun and fast and easy. A lot of stitching projects take a lot more time. This one was fast to use. So on the left, we have the Spellbinders May 2022 Clear Stamp of the Month Club, and they have the coordinating dies available. I use the coordinating dies to cut this piece and add simple rainbow stitching. I thought it'd be fun to also maybe do this in yellows and oranges to make it look like a sun and do a sun sentiment with it. But I wanted to share this because if you like the look of stitching and you wanna give it a try, this is a good option because it didn't take long to do at all. 
Again, if you're new to stitching, I'll put a link here to a video and I'll include it at the end of this video too. Now for a sentiment, I use the new Spellbinder Celebrate You Sentiments Hot Foil Plate Set. This is a really good one. Lots of celebration greetings, but what I really like are these small like thank you, uh, for you, love you, hello, made with love. These small ones are great to add to small circle or heart shaped die cuts to add to the center of things. I'm always looking for sentiments that work for that. This thank you is perfect for it. So I foiled the thank you with gold foil on white cardstock and I used a heart to die cut that. I then have my little stitch panel really quick to pull together. And the background panel is white cardstock and I used an embossing folder from last month's embossing folder of the month club. I'll show it to you in a moment. They have a club even for a large embossing folder. It's huge. And so you can get a different one each month. The price is really good. And last month's was this kind of sun ray. Now you know me, I like my bling, and I thought it'd be fun to add a tiny little colored gemstone at the end of each of those stitches. It took a few minutes to do this process, but I thought it really stepped up this simple card. But you could skip the gems if you wanted to. After adding all the gems, we have our completed card. I really like how happy this one is, and I plan to make more of them. I do share my other stitch projects that don't make it to videos over on my Instagram, so be sure to follow me there if you're interested. And by the way, this is the embossing folder from last month's embossing folder of the month club. Look how big it is. It can be used on slimline cards, mini slimline, five by seven, and regular cards as I did here. So this is just another fun example of using foil to add a bit of shine to any project, including those that have stitching. So I hope these foiling techniques inspired you. I know I've been doing a lot of foil videos lately, but I feel like if you're going to invest in a machine, then you really need to have a lot of ways to use it to make the most from it. But I will do other videos, don't worry, if you're not into foiling. All of these supplies are linked below in my YouTube description. I have a lot more on my blog, including the ability to save videos, bookmark them for later, bookmark individual cards, print a card um, supply list, everything. So be sure to head over there. And here at the end, I have a couple other videos for you. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.